Chapter 94, The Bait. One busy morning, everyone's head was drawn to their work in the Han's home office, when a call came through the landline. Hello. Good morning, Han Hyunaki's residence. May I know the pleasure of this call? Asked Riel. Thinking it was Hyunaki's secretary, Rosemary said, Could you hand the phone to Hyun? This is Rosemary, Riel felt aghast, quickly calmed herself, and said, My boss is busy. Any message you would want to relay? Rosemary was at the peak of getting mad and said, Could you just hand over the phone to him? He'll quickly answer once he knows who was calling. Riel smirked and wanted to throw the phone, but quickly replied, One moment, please. Riel walked briskly to Hyunaki and shoved the phone onto his face. What the? You looked, you're in a bad mood today, babe. Why was it? Overhearing the conversation, Rosemary flinched. It was Riel she thought. Riel was not talking. Hyunaki took the phone while smiling at her, holding her hand, and replied, Yes, who is this? Rosemary softened and replied, Baby, it is Rosemary. Hyunaki gulped, while Riel took off her hand from him harshly, then walked away. Hyunaki replied irritably, Why did you call at this hour? And how did you talk to Riel? Huh? What did you say? Rosemary got startled by the manner of Hyunaki's questioning, that she couldn't answer at once. Hyunaki asked again, why did you call Rosemary? What do you want? I am missing you, Hyun. That's all. Are you mad? I'm sorry, I didn't know. Rosemary made him feel she was crying. Hyunaki calmed down and said, Just stay put. I'll be seeing you, but not now. Wait for my call. That's all you can do at this time, he commanded. After ending the call, Hyunaki got upset that he quickly looked for Riel. He searched everywhere until a maid told him. Riel was in their bedroom. With a worried look written all over Hyunki's face, she saw Riel sitting quietly in her lazy boy chair. Hyunki hugged Riel and asked, Babe, I am so sorry. Riel replied faintly, I'm sorry too. I should not have answered the phone. Hyunki said concernedly, You're not at fault, babe. Come on, stay with me. He held her hands, pulling her away from the lazy boy chair. It was lunchtime, and Anita, the cook, announced, Lunch is served? Riel asked, What's for lunch, Nita? It must be another delectable feast. What is it? Anita brought out the baked chicken, laid it on the table, and said happily, It is a rosemary baked chicken. The two secretaries looked at each other warily, while Hyunaki coughed as if drowned in drinking water. Riel momentarily stood silently, then snapped, Anita, don't ever serve that on the table in my presence. I hate that rosemary chicken. Better serve me another dish that you prepared Riel seemed to vomit, so she dashed to the powder room and puked. Hyunki chased her to the powder room, soothed her back to comfort her, then embraced Riel. Hyunki humbly apologized. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I never expected this thing will happen. Please let this slide. Okay. It will only ruin your mood, our mood. I am here with you now. I'm all yours. Riel just stared blankly at Hyunki, saying nothing. Then she held his hand, then pulling her back to have their lunch with the secretaries. Riel kept quiet the entire day, making Hyunki more upset and restless. It was four in the afternoon when Riel received a call on her mobile. Hello, Mrs. Riel. It is Detective Devon. My lady detective followed Rosemary Lee to her house. And you won't believe this, where she was residing, it was where we arrested Sarah Wu. What? Does it mean Hyun bought that house for Sarah? And now he gave that to Rosemary Lee. What I knew was Hyunki rented that house. Had he lied to me again, I will look into it, Mrs. Riel. But we never see Mr. Han around, Detective Devon replied. Yes, because he moved his office here temporarily for me, she said. But please do not stop your surveillance. You might catch them somehow, and wait for the cheese in a trap, because the mouse could not resist that. Riel was caught unaware by Hyunki while talking on the phone. Hyunki asked. Who are you talking to, babe? Riel unwaveringly replied, I was talking to mom. She called, asking about my condition and my expectant date. Hyunki continued asking, Anne, and what, Hyun? Should I elaborate more on our conversation? Riel frowned. Hyunki got uneasy. Is there something she's not telling me? He thought. With chin up, Riel walked away from Hyunki, which bothered him more. Riel, we're okay, aren't we? Entreated Hyunki. What question is that? How okay should we be? Not to mention how stressed I was when your Rosemary called, Riel. Look, 
my relationship with Rosemary was something you could call a fling, something you should not be bothered about or feel insecure about. I am aware that you were hurting, and I am so sorry. But I promise you, I will put a stop to this. I, I got involved with her because you, you were pregnant, and I got that feeling of fear of touching you, because it might hurt the baby in your womb. I didn't intend to get seriously involved, Riel interrupted. Cut the chase, Hyun. Up to the last minute, you still stand with your lies. I will know it once I give birth. I am simply tolerating you just for the sake of our child, because I want to make my baby feel that he has a father, and that he feels loved, rather than, unwanted. But to ask how I feel about all this? I don't have the answer yet. Your action will be my decision, Riel was firm. Do you love me, Riel? Because I do love you and always will, Riel thought. He's trying to twist my emotions again, thinking he could always manipulate me with his devious flowery words and deceit. I don't know what indeed love is, Hyun. If I will look at your standpoint, my mind and feelings are messed up. Let us not speak of this anymore Riel walked past him, and Hyunaki was astounded by Riel's manner of speaking. She seemed determined and tough. That night, Hyunaki and Riel shared a bed, but were not on speaking terms, both backs were turned away from each other. An ample space was between them. It was Thursday morning, and Hyunaki woke up early. He was still bothered by the conversation between him and Riel, putting him in an irritating mood. The two secretaries felt uneasy about the mood brewing, so Alexis bravely tapped Riel's shoulder. Good morning, Mrs. Riel. How are things going? Have you had your breakfast? Alexis smiled, trying to perk Riel up. Riel smiled sparingly, and said, Come on, have breakfast with me then turned to Louis and shouted, Louis, come and join us. The three were enjoying their breakfast when Hyun Ki decided to join in. Louis started talking to break the ice when she remembered asking, Sir, you mentioned yesterday that we will have our monthly meeting on Friday, with the K-Mall group. Shall I send the announcement at 10 a.m.? Oh yes, sir, I recall that. What time are we having the meeting tomorrow? Should the K-R-H and H staff meet in the morning, and then the K-Mall staff in the afternoon? Riel said vehemently, put the KOR group in the morning, so that they could join us for lunch, then the rest in the afternoon. Hyun Ki agreed. After breakfast, Riel rose from her chair when Hyun Ki quickly held her hand, and clasped it with his. Are we good now, babe? Hyun Ki stood before her, staring lovingly at her. Reeler's heart was swept again, because her love for Hyun Ki never waned, only hurting, we're good, for now. They stared at each other, then Hyun Ki touched her face, and pinched her chin. When Riel smiled, Hyun Ki held her hand, brought her to his office, and made her sit with him. Stay close to me, babe. I'm more inspired to work with you at my side. Riel was thrilled and commented, Wow. I feel like my hair is getting longer. Riel tucked part of her hair behind her ear, everyone bursting with laughter. After lunch, Riel called the two secretaries to show them the baby's room, simultaneously asking Hyun Ki for them to be excused. Louis and Alexis were delighted with how the baby's room was fixed, and Riel asked them something they unexpectedly had not thought of. Both secretaries dreaded answering Rieler's questions. However, they felt the seriousness of Rieler's questions, that needed an immediate answer. Mrs. Riel, I could no longer conceal this, because it was heartbreaking. Rosemary sometimes entered your husband's office during lunch break, or when Mr. Han called for her. I could sometimes hear her thrilling laughter when they were flirting, and there was even a time, I saw them going together in Mr. Han's restroom. It was ugly to say it, but I heard them groaning and moaning in the loo, Louis narrated with muffled sobs. Rosemary usually bothered calling Mr. Han, despite his busy schedule. If I could not give the phone as quickly as she wanted, she got mad at me and said profanities, as if she were the boss. And it took them an hour over the phone, saying many sweet things and words you would not want to hear, confessed Alexis, then continued. Even how much we want to divulge their illicit affair to you. Louis and I couldn't muster up the courage to do so, because we fear of your condition. Riel was wearing a severe face, fists clenched, and then spoke. You have nothing to fear about the consequences of their wrongdoings. And I'm taking it here where you left it, Riel said with solid conviction. It was Friday and the two secretaries were preparing the portfolios for the meeting. The KRH and H office of the CEO staff randomly came in. While this happened, Hyun Ki felt no vessel for joy. He was whistling a romantic tune, spraying much cologne all over him. He examined well his face and clothes in the mirror. Hyun Ki's joy couldn't escape Reeler's attention. 
She was sure that Hyun Ki was excited to see Rosemary, and all this was shown in his manner of behavior. He had just given himself away, pissing her off. How would Riel react to this day's event?